Yo, if I'm, if I'm writing too slow. There we go. Two waves over me. Ooh, two marks. Nice. So the first things come when two waves over me. Over me. <laughs> Overlap. That is your superposition happening there. And you say when it over me, so what? So some of the individual displacement, blah, blah, blah. That's a second mark there. So B1, B1. Then you come to the main part which I wanted to look at, the interference part. So you have this thing, looks familiar, right? See this? Ah, light coming through, spread out, BD, BD, BD. What is BD? Bright, dark, bright, dark, bright, dark. Okay, I'm going to go through this. I'm going to go through this at the speed that assumes you have looked at this question and tried it out. Okay, so anyway, wavelength light, 610. That's our lambda. Distance is between the slit and the screen. That's our D. Let's call this D, A, lambda. Interference pattern is line labeled D for dark, B for bright. Okay, B and D. The distance across five bright fringes is 22 mm. Is this X? No, it is not X. That thing over there is across five bright fringes. You could say five bright fringes. Well, what is that thing? Okay, this is very important. You'll need to know this later. Mm, there we go. Five bright fringes. This is not X. X is just from one bright fringe to one bright fringe. Keep that in mind. Or a dark fringe to a dark fringe. Like that. It's up to you lah, okay? How you want to measure your X. Anyway, two slits, two light waves linking the slits are coherent. What does it mean by coherent? You want to say it is two waves after it comes out from the slit with the same, same what? Same or constant phase relationship. I know sometimes the masking will say phase, constant phase difference, but you will probably confuse that with constructive and, in, in, constructive and destructive interference. So think of it as phase relationship. Some masking will say phase difference. It is for the waves leaving the slits. When they leave, they have a constant phase relationship. It's a better way to say it. One mark, so this is just B, uh, B1, I think. Yes, it's B1. Now they ask you phase difference between the waves. Meeting at Q. So this is very important. At Q. What is the phase difference? Okay, so we need to do some analysis here. Where is Q? Q is there. Okay, so how do we find that? You need to know the conditions for destructive and constructive interference. So I'm going to just generally quickly write them out. If we're looking at phase difference mm, between the two waves at a certain point on the screen, here we'll have zero, okay. Then bright will be two pi. Another bright will be four pi. Because one full oscillation, one full cycle, here will be two pi, four pi. These are the conditions for constructive interference that will give us bright fringe. And we are looking at, where are we looking at? P. Okay, so P. What is happening at P? Let me just use a blue color. Okay, so P is at a D, so you're like, hmm, where is D? So you kind of have to think of, okay, uh, if you want to think of all these dark fringes, that will be, what will those be? 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, two waves meet with a phase difference. Okay, mm, here will be pi, 3 pi, and so on, so forth. Oh, sorry, not P, phase difference at Q. So if we're looking for the phase difference at Q, that's a bright fringe, which means it's constructive, which means the phase difference is 2 pi over there. So let's just go and write 2 pi. Actually, they want it in angles. So you can say 360 degrees. So you say, Miss, can I say 0 degree? Uh, constructive interference, ma. Yes, this mark scheme allows both, but I would recommend you don't write this one. Because, because of this, 0 degrees is the central bright fringe, the middle line. When you go up, will be the, the first order fringe. So that's 2 pi or 360. Okay, I write pi here because the degrees are harder to see the pattern. Anyway, calculate the path difference for the waves meeting at P. Path difference. So what they want now is your path difference. Delta, delta, L. What is happening at 
P. Okay, so we don't, we're not given any values of the path difference, so we kind of have to use our constructive destructive to help us out. At P. Okay, what's the path difference? You can do the same thing. Path difference, if it's constructive, is zero. When it's here, you have a full wavelength. One full wavelength is 2 pi. And then two full wavelength is 4 pi. So you can just say, I have path difference in terms of pi is these ones. If it's destructive, it's going to be a dark fringe, a D. So this would be 0 0.5 lambda, which is also pi. Uh, 1.5 lambda, which is also 3 pi. What other lengths do we have? Our oh, 0.5 lambda and 1.5 lambda. All the red color you see is destructive interference. That's why you have a dark fringe, D. So you want to say you have a path difference of 1.5 lambda at P. So let's go write that down. 1.5 lambda. Done! Eh, but they want in nanometers, not in terms of lambda. So what is our lambda? If you scroll back, they told us, yes, lambda is given to us right here, 610. So you write here, 1.5 times 610 nanometers. The answer they want in nanometers, so we can, okay, let's keep our nanometers. Multiply together, you should get 915 nanometers. So you can write 915, there's 3SF, or if you want to round it off to 9, 2SF will be... 920. I think the mask scheme will usually run up to 2SF, but you are encouraged to keep your 3SF answer here. Because maybe, who knows, you may need it for later calculation. Okay, two marks. One is from a... What is a two mark? I think this is supposed to be one mark. Anyway, one from C1 and one from A1. Something like that. Then you come to the interesting parts where you have to describe and calculate more. Determine the distance between two slits. Ooh. Here they say distance between two slits is A. Now where have we seen the equation with A before? Whenever you see this kind of question, first step you want to do is just write down an equation that you know for this chapter. Like that. Maybe if you don't know how to solve, maybe you might get a point. But this will help you to think about it. Oh, A. Uh, we know D. We know lambda, we're trying to find A, we know X too. So rearrange this, we're trying to find what A is, so you have lambda D over X. Very nice. Okay, let's plug in everything we know. So lambda, wavelength of light is given to us as, what is the wavelength of light? 610 nanometers. Ooh, we should probably change this to meters because final answer is in meters, so nano. What's D? D here will be our distance between the slits and the screen. So that's 2.7 meters. So let's just write that down. Already in meters? Very good. X. Fringe separation. Bright fringe, dark fringe, bright fringe, dark fringe. Ooh, this is a tricky one. You don't use 22 meters, ah. Uh, because 22 meters is 1x. Here to here, another x. Bright to bright, another x. Here, let me draw lines for you. And another fringe separation. So in total, there's four. Between five, there is one, two, three, four. Four spacings. So 22 is actually 4x. Note, 22, 22 cm is 4x. So our x here will be 22 cm. 10, 10, 82. Divide by 4, though. Or I say times 1 over 4. Okay, because of this fact. Plug in everything to your calculator, you should get 3 times, well 2.99 actually, but 3 times 10 to negative 4 meters. Everything in meters. This is in meters, this is in meters, this is also in meters, so very good, all in meters. Wow, 3 marks for this. First one comes from your equation. <coughs> Either you wrote it <coughs> or used it. Second comes from the fact that you know this or you wrote it in the equation here, also okay. Then finally, your final answer. Woo! Three marks for this. Be very careful not to plug in wrong values. Some of you may be wondering, Miss, can I use this equation? Nah? Path difference is A sine theta. Because it's also an equation. Nah? Well, yes, you could. 
You know this from a previous question. You're trying to find this and you don't know this. Too many unknown. Cannot. So don't use this equation. Okay? So first step, you just write out everything. Lah. Then you see what info you have to solve. Now, here comes the explain part. Waves ah, have a lot of explanations, so you better know how to explain. A higher frequency of visible light is now used. Sit and explain the changes to the separation of the fringes. Ooh, interesting. Higher frequency light. So you're changing your frequency. Once again, let's write our uh, AX over D, X, D. What is increasing? Frequency. Ayo, but here got no frequency. Oh. So how? Wavelength would change, right? Because, because of V equals to F lambda. So if the frequency is higher, means your wavelength is now shorter. So if your wavelength is now shorter, what will happen to the separation of the fringes? So that's our X. What will happen to our X? Oops. So wavelength decrease means your X will also decrease. So you can put it like that. Because it's in the numerator. So numerator, numerator. So how are you going to explain this? State and explain. One mark. Well, you don't have to talk about the previous part, but I'm going to just mention it, okay? When your frequency increase, wavelength will decrease since V is constant. Speed of light. I'm just writing short form because I don't even write the whole sentence. Take very long. Okay, so based on your equation, lambda equals to ax over d, when your wavelength decrease, then your fringe separation will also decrease. Okay, the main part they're looking for is this thing. When, uh, when lambda decrease, so uh, fringe separation will decrease. Please use the whole sentence. I'm just drawing arrows here, but you should draw the sen write the whole sentence out. And this is the part they're looking for. The top part here, they're not looking for it, but best to also write it in case... If this is a two-mark question, then yeah, you probably want to mention the top part as well about frequency and lambda. Okay, then you come to this part. Intensity, oh, by the way, that one up there, if it's hard to visualize it, go open the simulation in one of the previous video, change the frequency and see how the pattern change. See it with your own eyes. It's hard to imagine with this maths equation over there. Okay, next one. Intensity of light increase. So I increase. Uh, without altering the frequency. Okay, so frequency is fixed. Good to know. Compare the appearance of the fringes after this change um, bef after this change with before. Also, by the way, I forgot to mention. Previously, oh, when we change lambda, A and D are the setup of the apparatus. What is A and D? A is the, 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 the slit separation. You kind of have to change the whole slit to change A. And D, you have to manually move the screen. So if they didn't say they move, means A and D are constant. Okay? That's why A and D are locked. Now, intensity increase, how does that affect the appearance of the fringes? Where have we seen intensity? Whenever you see the word intensity in a chapter 14 or 15, think about amplitude. Intensity depends on amplitude squared. Okay, so how will we mention that? Well, they don't, they don't really affect anything. I mean, you still interfere at the same spots. So, how you can describe this is, you can say your bright fringes, okay, wherever the bright places are, appear brighter. Because now you have double the amplitude at those spots. Okay, so bright fringes appear brighter. And if you just write that, you're like, hmm, this looks a bit too short for two marks. So, we need to think of, state and explain, I guess. We need to mention more things. Okay, so this one actually, you look at the mark scheme, there's three points. If you mention two, you get two. So first things, because you compare the appearance. Brightness is just one part of the appearance. How about the distance? How about the spacing? How about the dark fringe? There's more appearance to talk about. Okay, so let's just talk about all of them. Okay, uh, what about the dark fringe? Let's, I can also mention that. Dark fringes are unchanged because they're already dark. Okay, unchange. Okay, when you, by the way, the light incident on the double slit, you are changing the amplitude here. Sorry, I should say too many A's. Amplitude here increase, which means this first light wave will have a bigger amplitude 
the second light wave will also have a bigger amplitude. So yes, they will still cancel and well, they will still construct and destruct at the same places, just with a bigger amplitude. Okay, so dark fringes are unchanged, still cancel out, bright fringes are brighter. Uh, what else can we talk about? Appearance. Ah yes, how far apart are the fringes? And other things like that. So you can say, the fringe separation is unchanged. Separation. What else is unchanged? Uh, fringe width. We'll learn more about the fringe width in the later part in diffraction. Fringe separation, fringe width, and number of fringes unchanged. So this is describing the full range of appearance of the changes to whatever you see on the screen. It's all about what you see on this screen. Bright, dark, bright, dark, and bright, dark. Once again, go play the simulation to see for yourself how it changes when you change all this stuff. Here is just a B2 mark, which means if you get any two points, sure. If you get a third one, they're not going to give you an extra mark, unfortunately. 